worship is the lifestyle of a Christian, but I felt for a while that there was something lacking in my worship, and a suggestion came that I should consider the Psalms. Although I didn't read the Psalms much after becoming a Christian, only chanting them in Evensong back in the day, my first experience with them was as a child. At nine or ten years of age, I was reading a story about a girl at a boarding school in a forest in Canada. When she was trying to escape from a fire from surrounding her school, she remembered Psalm 21, and she quoted, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Those words stayed with me, and whenever I was down or in a difficult situation, I'd remember and reread that psalm. It strengthened me, and it's still one of my go-to psalms. I loved the beginning of it in the Passion Translation version. It says, I look up to the mountains and hills, longing for God's help. But then I realise that our true help and protection is only from the Lord, our Creator who made the heavens and earth. He will guard and guide me, never letting me stumble or fall. God is my keeper. He will never forget or ignore me. So I made Psalms the theme of my retreat at the beginning of this month. I discovered that Psalms reveal a rich understanding of worship, showing psalmists who seek God in every context they're in and who share with God all their worries and concerns. The Psalms show the breadth and depth of the psalmist's worshipping relationship with God. They can help us understand the depth and breadth of God's character, which can enhance our worship of God too. As Tom Wright says, the Psalms represent the Bible's own spiritual root system for the great tree we know as Christianity. We ignore them at our peril. They are how we can feed. They can. Ha they are how we can feed and sustain our worship. The Book of Psalms has been the Jewish prayer book and songbook for centuries, an integral part of daily worship uh, for Christians too, although overlooked by many in recent years. Psalms was the hymn book that Jesus, his disciples, Paul and all the religious leaders would have known by heart and used often, if not daily. The wonderful poetry of Psalms is not only praise God, but they're a form of prayer, of petition and intercession. They're full of wisdom and also prophetic and full of pointers towards Christ. Now, no other book Old Testament book is quoted or referred to more often in the New Testament than the book of Psalms. Jesus quoted many books of the Old Testament, but Psalms was the one he quoted or used most in his teaching. There is a depth of praise, of wonder, lament, wisdom and prophecy hidden within these poetic songs that can increase our understanding of our awesome God and his Son if we spend time reading and praying through them. When we struggle to express ourselves to God, and I often do, then we can go to them to provide us with the language to express our wonder, our pain, our distress, our anger, our confusion, our worries, our anxieties. We can use them for confessing and repenting and a starting point to bring all these things to God in prayer. To do so, we need to know them and remember them like we know and remember the lyrics of our favourite secular and worship songs. Now, for any situation we find ourselves in, there's a psalm we can use to help us pray for it. For example, if we're being persecuted, then Psalm verses 1 and 2 can start off our cry for help. Yahweh, my God, I turn to hide my soul in you. Save me from all those who pursue and persecute me. There is none to deliver me but you. When we see something amazing in nature that renders us speechless, we can use Psalm 8. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? We're thankful for what God has done. There's so many psalms to choose from that tell of God's marvellous deeds, how he remembers his people when they call to him, how he saves and rescues and delivers them. The question for all of us is, can we recall them when needed? As Eugene Peterson said, we don't learn the psalms until we're praying them. Now God's word hasn't completed its work until it brings out an answer from us. 
and all our answers are prayers and the Psalms are a way of training us in this answering speech. Usually when we study the Bible, our usual approach to it is to ask, what is God saying to me? But in the Psalms, the question is, how do I answer the God who speaks to me? By reading and praying through the Psalms, we have a greater understanding of who we are as everything that we can feel or experience in relation to God is in these poetic prayers. Through them we can explore all aspects of our lives and then be able to say who we are and what is in us, be it anger, guilt, salvation, praise, lament, to the God who loves, judges and saves us in Jesus. Regular praying through the Psalms can transform our lives and our worship. I've just begun this journey and I encourage you, if you don't already, to try praying through the Psalms regularly, one or two a day, and see where God takes you. Perhaps you could continue pausing for a moment and start now. Mm -hmm.